Max Shulga, and we have senior guard Zeb Jackson. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. We'll dismiss them after a few minutes, and then we'll take questions for coach. So coach, do you want to get started? Yeah, uh, obviously uh, we have a ton of respect for Fordham. Uh, you know, Coach Ergo and his staff, the players, um, you know, are really tough. Uh, you know, they try to impose their will on the game every single time they come out there. They play with a ton of energy and, and emotion and enthusiasm and, and a physical brand of basketball that, that's really tough to beat. Um, obviously, this game could have gone any, any direction. Um, you know, we're down one at, at, at halftime. Uh, up at their place, we're up one at halftime. Um, and so, you know, the two teams are pretty even, you know, throughout throughout that stretch and certainly throughout the second second half. Um, they had a little bit of a lead. Our guys continued to play and fought back. Um, you know, clearly the, the offensive rebounds were key for us, you know, um, limiting theirs, uh, plus getting some extras for ourselves. Uh, you know, we turned it over 14 times and certainly, you know, one is always too many for a coach, but you know you're going to do it, you know, some against against a, a really good defense, an aggressive defense like Fordham. And so that was that was limited um, to give us a chance. Obviously, a ton of free throws for us. Um, you know, some some we uh, we did really well with, and some some we didn't, and uh, that's part of part of the game. But uh, really proud of the guys. Proud that that uh, you know we're able to advance in this tournament. I mean, I think. That game and, and you know some of the others that I've watched so far and had a chance to see and certainly see the scores right um, has has been what the A10 has been about all, all season and uh, there's there's a lot of parity a lot of tough teams a lot of excellent coaches a lot of great individual players and uh, you know these games are going to be tight. All right, we'll take questions for Zeb or Max. We'll start here in the front row on the aisle. Sam Basil House of College Hoops, Max, in a game like this where you know field goals were hard to come by in the last six minutes, I don't think anybody scored one, it was all from free throws. How do you keep your composure? How do you stick to your game plan in a, in a physical, grinded out game like that? Um, I didn't even know that. I didn't, like, I didn't even know that the, like, neither team scored in the last six minutes, but um, I think just taking it possession, possession at a time and just getting the best out of every possession, getting stops, and then. Um, you know, being aggressive on the other end. We'll come to the other side here in row one. Yeah, this is a question for players on how you like picking up from where you left off, you coming off winning the Atlantic 10 tournament and getting to March Madness. Like, how what is the confidence level that you're able to re retain your Atlantic 10 championship even with the type of season you have and a, a lot of teams showing improvement and, and not actually starting off? in the second round as opposed to the quarterfinals. Let's start with Zed and then we'll go to Max on this one. Uh, over the summer we read a book um, and uh, part of the book talked about like uh, leaving, a, well it was called legacy, but leaving a legacy, right? Like leaving the uh, place better than how you found it. So um, for us our motivation um, coming off of last year, even though the team isn't the same, it's like, okay, well we're all, at the end of the day, we're in the same, same name on the front of jersey, so. We, don't, we want to make sure that we leave a, a, a better legacy now we found it, and we just want to continue that tradition. And Max? You said the level of confidence? Yes. Um, I think it's just we, we, watch, we watch a bunch of film, and uh, we, we know that when, when we're being ourselves and when we stick to who we are, we're, we're really hard to beat. So we just, we just try to do that as, as much as possible. And uh, you know, mistakes are going to happen, but uh, we know what we're capable of when, when we do what we're supposed to do. We'll stay on the aisle here, row one, and then we'll go to row three back to that. Max and Zeb, they, uh, they really, you know, it was, a, it was a war out there. I mean, they, it was a very physical game, and uh, a lot of stuff was getting by the refs. And, uh, you know, it looked like it was taking you out of your game a little bit, you know, where you would get upset and want to call, and, they, and you weren't getting the call. My question is, you know, I got a feeling it's going to be the same thing against UMass. It's going to be a possession-by-possession possession game. You think this game served you well for tomorrow's game on the quick turnaround? Let's start. Um, yeah, go ahead, Max, and then we'll go to Zeb. Uh, yeah, hundred um, percent. You know they play, they play, they play very physical, and you know either either game, uh, like even if it wasn't Fordham and if it was a different if a different team, uh, it would have been good for us to kind of get in rhythm and, and you know having 
a game under our belts in, in this gym. So, um, yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely helps us for tomorrow. I think uh, it, it was good to kind of see how Russ was calling things. And um, like Max said, we know we'll be good for tomorrow. Um, it's about matching that physicality or, or surpassing that physicality and hitting first. And, um, yeah, like you said, we know it's going to be a physical game. So it's just about coming in, being ready, um, being locked in, and, and, and uh, being us. Across the aisle, second row. Hey guys, congrats on the win. Uh, Zach Joaquin, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, they scored 24 points in the second half, if my math is right. Just talk about the defensive performance in the second half. What were the halftime conversations and how did y'all lock down on that end? Um, Rose was, was uh, scoring a lot of hard shots in, in, in the first half. You know, he did a couple of those step backs. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we were kind of talking, us players, like talking about how He's he's really looking he's really looking for those and he's obviously in rhythm to to be making those so um, yeah just just uh, keep them off keep them off threes and and then just help each other on the drives. Does that have anything to add there? No, it's cool. Okay, we're gonna go back across the aisle and then we'll go to you. Last two for the student athletes. Adam Epstein, nine ten. The fans Zeb, in the first half they had six of eleven from the three point line. Second half three of fourteen. What changes did you make? Why do you think they didn't shoot as well in the second half? Um, like I said, Rose had a, a, a good amount to do with that in the first half, and uh, we definitely wanted to shut them down, but also just limit breakdowns. Like a lot of the three they were getting was um, us breaking down, us not communicating, and, and leading the good threes, not just contesting them. So just limit breakdowns and just being more connected. Like first half, we felt like they were kind of coming together more and more connected as a team. And, um, we were kind of letting the rest frustrate us as well, kind of separate us a little bit. So we just wanted to be more connected and, and limit breakdowns. All right, last question for student athletes over here on row two. Yeah, um, Ty Wilson with the combo of times. Um, <clears throat> Max, you went into this game and you didn't miss any shots. You went four for four from the field, two for two from the three, and then also four for four from the free throw line while also leading the team in assists. Would you say that you were kind of just going into the game shooting the shots that you felt comfortable with? while playing within the system that you guys were setting up? Uh, yeah, 100%. You know, taking the shots that I'm, that I'm comfortable with and, and uh, they were, yeah, the, the shots that I was comfortable with, with and the ones that they were uh, kind of given to me, you know, we know that they're, that they guard, uh, they're one of the best in the country, I'm pretty sure, guarding the three point line and limiting shots from there. So, um, yeah, just, just pick, picking my shots, I would say. Okay, Max and Zeb, we appreciate you taking the time. You're excused. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, at this time, we'll take questions for Coach Oak. We we'll start here in the front row. We'll go right across the Thank street. Thank you. Yeah. Get a microphone. Uh, Coach Oak, Gabriel R with WBCW. Um, so Kyle Rose had 16 in the first half, but only three in the second half. What changes would you make specifically to uh, reduce his output? Yeah, I, mean, I think Zeb kind of mentioned it, and Max as well. Like he made a couple of tough ones, you know, step back threes, you know, that were guarded somewhat well. And uh, you know, he's a really good player. And um, you know, I think our our focus was we were getting hit on screens, quite honestly. Um, you know, in the pick and roll, and he got a few of them with that, like the first bucket of the game. Uh, whoever was on him at that point um, ended up getting hit on the screen, all right, he pulls inside the line, then he pulls it right back, and he has, has plenty of room, you know, to get it off. And, uh, you know, we just tried to adjust our pick and roll defense a little bit and reminded our guys, you know, the, the details of how we play pick and roll defense to not allow that type of shot. Um, and then, you know, I thought our guys just did a nice job in the second half of just trying to keep their chests in front and limiting the breakdowns, like, like Zeb mentioned. Um, to where they weren't getting wide open ones. Stay, we'll go to the second row. Um, yeah, Tom Wilson with the Commonwealth Times. Um, at the end of the game, uh, Joe Bamisil hit some pretty big free throws, and before that, he hadn't made any. Uh, would you say that he was able to still be able to hit those with confidence and that you instill confidence in him to shoot even when he's not hitting them? Yeah, we all believe in Joe. Joe believes in Joe, uh, but you're always gonna have moments where it's like some weird things happen to you. And uh, certainly that was one of his, his moments. Like he could bang a three and then all of a sudden he's, he's wide open at the free throw line and, and just didn't, didn't make them today for some reason. But he made the key ones you know, that he needed to down the stretch. And Joe was very vocal in the timeouts. You know, um, you know when it was tie game, 
you know, he was talking to the guys and motivating the guys and uh, very positive, um, you know, with his communication. Um, and others did that for him, you know. Um, and, and a lot, of, you have to have a short memory in basketball, right? And uh, we try not to look in the rear view uh, too many times. And so as his coach and his teammates, you know, they're, they're encouraging him because we've seen him do so many great things, especially at the free throw line too, uh, that it's bound to go in. Go here in the front row, and then we'll come across. So right here, Coach. This was a lot closer of a game than when you played Fordham back at Rose Hill earlier in the regular season. Do you feel like defensively there was anything that the Rams kind of switched up from the last game to this game? Yeah, I mean they 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 stayed in the zone a lot longer, right? And so it made it a much slower game. Um, and then you know their their offense, you know, they were running their offense and running it to later in the clock. I think we got two shot clock violations in the first, you know, the first half. Um, and so, you know, I think they, they, they mixed up their defenses. You know, they, they had played man, they played 3-2 zone, they played, you know, 1-3-1. One, one. So there was, there was a lot of stuff being thrown at our guys from a defensive perspective, their defense to us. And you always know that they're really good at, at you know, taking the ball from you. You know, there were a couple of times in pick and roll where we got trapped, where we turned it over, and we've got to make sure that we're, we're better in those situations. But. Um, you know, they're a really competitive team. You know, it's like this A10, the A10 is excellent this year. It doesn't, like I've said many a time, it doesn't get enough credit uh, for, for, you know, the depth, you know, that our team, our league has uh, around the country. Uh, and Fordham's a great example of that. We'll come across this side in the front row. Go ahead. Yeah, Coach. I, I, what have you told the players as far as practicing making their free throw shots on games where you go about like five or six minutes without hitting a field goal. And how will yeah, that I mean, help we're, we're trying to round? run our offense. And how will that help in the very next round against UMass? Yeah, I mean, I, we were trying to run our offense and, and we were trying to attack off the bounce. And, uh, you know, I thought some of those were, were obviously good plays for us, um, you know, in terms of getting some switches that we wanted and, and uh, letting our players play, you know, at that point in space. and. You know, we told the guys, you know, before the game, you know, in college basketball, that this younger generation that plays the game now, um, different when I played, even way different from the generation before me, all these kids can handle the ball and shoot, and, and it's really hard to pressure guys, all right, when you, when you give one another space because of the ability for these kids nowadays to handle and drive. Fouls are bound to happen. Um, and, uh, and certainly, you know, Max is tough to guard. You know, Zeb's, Zeb's quickness. You know, he's very, very quick, like Rose. Rose is tough to guard. And, uh, you know, we were just trying to give our guys, you know, the max space. And then from a free throw perspective, this team's been excellent all year in terms of shooting free throws. And so certainly that's a, we felt was an advantage for us the more that we could get to the free throw line. We got to the free throw line early in the first half and got to the one-on-one. -on -one. And got to the bonus there, and then we weren't really able to convert, you know, down the stretch. Didn't get there much, you know, the last four or five minutes. Um, but, you know, um, every game takes a life of its own. And so, you know, our next focus, obviously, is our preparation, our rest, uh, and our preparation for a really good UMass team. We'll take last two questions right here, then over there. Coach Odom will be available outside after this because we've got to get four minutes. Go ahead. Coach, following up on that, you, you, you did have 27 free throws. They only had 13. They, they even had uh, three more field goals than you guys did. And pretty much across the board, everything else was very even. It seems like you won that game at the free throw line and also that mi missed layup with, you know, at the end by them. That was, it was just a, a really tight game. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it was one of those things I said right after the game. Uh, it's a really hard game. It's one of those that you feel for whoever loses, right? Because both, both teams, uh, the collection of players that were on the court today, you know, really competed, you know. Um, and certainly I'm proud of my guys. I know Coach is proud of his guys, too, for how hard they played and, and the effort that they put in. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's like you can run the play perfectly. It just doesn't happen. And, um, and, and so, you know, we're very fortunate to win and, uh, you know, we're excited to continue to move on. Last question on the other side. Um, yes, yeah, so speaking about Toby Lowell specifically, he had um, 22 minutes of play, but also specifically 9 for 11 from the free throw line. Yeah. 
And I wanted you to just kind of talk more about the ascension that he's made, especially in a key tournament like this one. Yeah, I mean, this is really his first time, like with big minutes, you know, playing in a, in a tournament format like this, shy of the MTE earlier in the season. And so, you know, he's just scratching the surface, you know, with what he's going to be as a, as a future player. And uh, we're certainly fortunate to have him on our team. Uh, he's, he's really athletic. Uh, he's, a, he's an amazing worker. And, uh, and he's not afraid of big moments. And, and certainly, you know, going to the free throw line today, he, he was there a bunch. And his teammates found him, you know, near the rim, you know, where he was able to get fouled. And, uh, you know, he, he was able to knock it down. And, uh, but that, that doesn't just happen, all right? You've got to work at it. And Toby is one of the first to the gym every day, uh, and one of the last to leave. And uh, that's the type of kid he is. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.